Bruchem uh, Aboim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope I don't clear my throat too much. I'm getting over a cold. Um, this, uh, tonight, on my thoughts, I'd like to talk about B'ni B'chari Yisrael. A verse in the Torah, it says, Israel, my firstborn son. So this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine the relationship that exists between God Almighty and the children of Israel. The question is, what is so special about God's relationship with the Jewish nation versus the other nations of the world? You know, the Torah states in the book of Genesis, in the connection to the creation of Adam, the first man, that God created man, as it says, but Salam Elohim, <clears throat> in the image of God. It does not state that God created only Jews in the image of God. It states that all 7.7 billion people that exist in the world today were all created in the image of God. That being the case, then what's so special about the Jewish nation? That God Almighty calls them in the book of Shemos, B'ni B'chori Yisrael, Israel, my firstborn son. So to understand this, we have to go to a Rashi in the fifth book of the Torah that states that God Almighty offered his Torah to all the nations of the world. <clears throat> but before they accepted, they all asked him, What's in it? When God replied, well, they all declined, stating that the Torah did not conform to their natures. However, when God Almighty offered the Torah to the children of Israel, they did not ask what's in it. Their reply was, Naseh v'nishma, we will do, and then we will listen. <clears throat> meaning that they, <sighs> meaning that they accepted the Torah that God had offered them sight unseen. This statement went totally against their nature. Jews are by their very nature a questioning and argumentative people. Though we are referred to as God's chosen people, based on this Rashi, it would seem that it was not God who chose us. It was we who chose God. Once we chose him as, our, as God, our Father in heaven, what we did is we initiated a father and son relationship. Since we were the first and only nation to accept him as our father, we, in essence, made God a father. We took on the status of his firstborn son, Israel. It is a man's firstborn child that adds the title of father to his name. It does seem strange that if we are truly God's firstborn child, his chosen nation, then why have, we so, why have we suffered so much through our history? The answer to this question may be best understood with a parable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Imagine if you're walking down the street and you see a drunk who's lying in the gutter in his own vomit. What would you do? Well, probably shake your head and think what a waste of life, but then you just walk on. But what if the person lying in the gutter was the son of a f good friend of yours? Then what would you do? I think that you'd probably stop and offer him some assistance. You would ask him if there was anything you could do to help him. But what would you do if the person who was lying in the gutter was your own son? Hmm. Without a doubt. You would pick him up by the scruff of his neck and drag him home, scolding him, trying to impress upon him how he was wasting his life and that it was time for him to get his act together. You would do whatever was necessary to help your beloved son to get back on the right track. This, then, is the relationship that we share with God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. Due to his deep love for us, he constantly administers tough love. You know, walking away is not an option. As the verse states in Mishle in Proverbs, the one that God Almighty loves, he rebukes like a father to his son. He loves us. His, pardon me, his love for us is unending. The Holy Bel Shem Tov said that God Almighty loves us even more than a woman who has been barren for many years, but then in her later years, she gives birth to a beautiful child. One can only imagine the deep love that she feels towards her special child. The Holy Bel Shem Tov said that God Almighty loves us even more than the woman portrayed in our story. At the Brisbane Hapsarim, at the covenant between the parts, God Almighty told Abraham Avino Abraham, our father, that his children would be enslaved for 400 years. Some say 430 years, counting from this event. If we look at the reality, 
Well, the children of Israel did not spend all 400 years in servitude. After all, they were only in Egypt for 210 years, not 400. In addition, 80 of those 210 years were spent with Yosef, serving as the viceroy of Egypt. During his reign, it was good to be a Jew. So in reality, the children of Israel were only slaves for a total of 86 years. 86 is only one-fifth of 430. Both holy temples stood for a little more than 400 years. God, as a loving father, is always hoping that his children will repent and change, change their errant ways. But in the end, even if they don't repent, well, they are still his firstborn child, and he cannot walk away. The Hebrew word beni, my son, has a gematria, a numerical value of 62. And 62 is the same gematria, a numerical value, as the Hebrew words avi ha-ben, pardon me, avi ha yeled, excuse me, the father of the child. God does not shirk from his responsibility as our father. He is more than willing to administer tough love when it is needed. We witnessed that after only 210 years in Egypt, the children of Israel had fallen to the 49th level of impurity. Had they descended to the 50th level, they would have entered into the abyss and then they would never have been redeemed. Their salvation came about not because of their merit. It came about because they were the descendants of the forefathers. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Avraham Avinu was the first person in history to both recognize and introduce the concept of monotheism in the world. He spread the knowledge of God wherever he went and the concept that we have an obligation to serve him. God states in the Torah in Genesis that the reason why he had chosen Avraham Avinu was because Laman asher yitzavet es banov ves beso acharav that he would instruct his children and his household after him to follow in the ways of God. I don't think that it is an accident that we share a father-child relationship with God Almighty. You know, a, a, an employee can be terminated, a friend can be forgotten, a wife can be divorced, but a child, well, a child-father relationship is one that can be bruised and battered, but it can never be so totally severed. We love our children even more than we love ourselves. We love them even before they were born. We witness in the Torah that when God Almighty redeemed the children of Israel from their oppressive slavery in Egypt, he made it personal. He displayed his love and affection for the Jewish nation by all the miracles and wonders that he performed for the eyes of all the Egyptians. The last plague, the killing of the firstborn, was executed by God Almighty himself, not an angel. As we read in our Passover Haggadah, all of this was done as a sign of his deep affection for his firstborn child, Israel. You know, somehow we have outlived the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Persians, and even the Romans. All of these civilizations are buried in the sands, and yet we are still above the ground. We are still waiting for the climax of our story. It would seem that all the pain and suffering and persecution that our nation throughout all of our history has been forced to endure is what has kept us alive and close to our Father in heaven. Our strength has been and always will be Kol Kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Yaakov. Prayer, prayer is our greatest weapon and the secret to our survival. It is our difficulties that have forced us to turn to our Father in heaven. As the saying goes, there's no atheist in a foxhole. We have witnessed this phenomena in our present time. Somehow, the massacre of October 7th has reawakened the pintaliyid, that spark of divinity that exists within the soul of each and every Jew. More than ever, Jews are praying to God for his salvation. B'ni b'chori Yisro. Israel, my firstborn child. You know, we may be wayward children, and he may deserve better, but that does not change the fact that we are still his children. We may have no merits, again, but we are the descendants of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You know, we carry your name, Jew, which comes from the name Judah. 
This name has within it your ineffable name of mercy. Brave Jewish soldiers are willing to give up their lives to protect your land, the holy land that you bequeathed to our forefathers. It is our hope and prayer that you should rain down terror on all your children's enemies, just like you did in the days of Pharaoh. The battles that the children of Israel are fighting today are your battles. The war is your war. With that, let us break down the gates of heaven and tell, <clears throat> tell God our Father in heaven that the time has come and that he should end all the suffering and sorrow in the world today with the return of all our hostages, the speedy recovery of all our injured, and the comforting of all those who have lost loved ones. And of course, the safe return of all of our brave soldiers celebrating the end of the war. <clears throat> May you put an end to all wars and usher in a lasting peace with the coming of Mashiach Sukenu quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. And again, let me remind you, again, Kol Kol Yaakov, our strength is prayer. Please remember to add the nation of Israel, the brave soldiers that are serving us in Israel, so that God should protect them and save them. And this war should end quickly, again, with the coming of the Mishat Messiah. If you can donate, donate. Whatever you can do, there's no little thing done here. Again, God should bless us all again. There should be a time of peace and joy for all of the world. Thank you for listening. Again, please push uh, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, if you would. And normally there would be a uh, musical section after this. Again, I still have a little cold. And I don't want to do it unless it's right. So again, next week, hopefully we'll continue with the musical section as well. God bless. Be well. Thank you for listening and enjoy.